Hello, hello everyone, and uh, welcome for this new release of uh, Zen Orchestra uh, for a five dot uh, uh, eighty four. So this one is uh, about um, exciting new features, but obviously at we do every month. Uh, however, um, this time uh, we'll start with something that is completely new. That is something that uh, we didn't have before, and we didn't announce. So it's a kind of a surprise. So let's start uh, right now for this June release. So the first uh, thing that we have uh, is about the uh, Zen Orchestra Appliance Configuration Cloud Backup. So this features allows you to save your Zen Orchestra Appliance configuration. So by configuration, I mean uh, everything related to uh, the hosts, their IP address, uh, the users, the backup jobs, and so on. And all of this could be I would say synchronize or backup to uh, your uh, Vates account, so or your zenorchestra.com account, which is the same thing. So it means as soon as you enable this, uh, once a day, uh, your configuration will be uh, encrypted with the key that you gave locally, and the configuration will be uh, encrypted and then compressed and finally sent to uh, your account that is stored on our machines. And since uh, this configuration is 100% uh, encrypted and compressed, and we do not have the key. The key stays on your local uh, computer, I mean, when you type it, so you have to remember that key. Um, then we only get the uh, encrypted bits uh, stored with your account. So when you want to restore this, you just have to click on a button to restore, and you will be able to restore the last one, and in the future, you'll have uh, you know more options. But that's a, that's the start. And this feature is really, really uh, cool because even if you lose, uh, I, I don't know, your Zen Orchestra and you didn't make any uh, metadata backup for your Zen Orchestra, then you can count on you know uh, our servers to store your configuration. And again, um, you need to keep your uh, key, your passphrase, whatever uh, you call it, uh, on your side. And we don't want to to know it, and we have no way to uh, you know read that configuration from our side. So this is the first uh, release of this feature. We'll have many improvements in the future, uh, but feel free to test it and give us feedback uh, because we'll see uh, uh, what would be the next priority with that. But obviously, this is something. Um, I would say the first step to help you to get more with Zen Orchestra Appliance, uh, it starts with the metadata backup, but in the future, we might have other interesting things, so stay tuned. Let's switch to the uh, REST API. So as you know, the REST API is now here since uh, I think a while, uh, and that's why we decided that it's going out of alpha status. It worked uh, very well without any uh, uh, surprises. So. Uh, I would say now it could be considered as beta, but I mean, there is no reason that you couldn't use it. So uh, anyway, uh, now it's uh, not on alpha anymore. And uh, this month you have two new endpoints that you could use. Uh, first endpoint is to query when you want to make an update to uh, Zen Orchestra. Um, so you want to see if it's up to date. So you make a simple uh, HTTP command uh, get on the uh, v0 slash appliance slash updater and it will return a result and if there is no updates uh, it will re return is up to date true. So this is really helpful because you could even monitor that with an external tool that will ask this endpoint and if it's not returning uh, is up to date true you might have an alert and then you a warning whatever and then you know that your Zen Orchestra is not up to date anymore. So that's why it's pretty interesting. And even more than this, if you don't want to go to the web UI to make the update yourself, you could send a post uh, method in HTTP that will do the upgrade. So that's the slash updater slash action slash upgrade. And then uh, this will trigger the update. And after that, if you redo uh, you know, the get command to get the status, you will get uh, up to date true. So that's pretty convenient. Let's move to the um, Project Pyrgos thing. So basically, as you remember, Project Pyrgos is the capability to create a Kubernetes cluster with few clicks. Um, but in this version, when you create the Kubernetes cluster, uh, and the big difference is now you can do it and select the version of your Kubernetes cluster you want to have. So this is convenient because sometimes you don't want the last version, you want a previous version, whatever, and so on. And so that's a small thing, but 
just to tell you that behind the scene, we are also making good progress and provide you more than that. And that will be a surprise for very likely next month. So also stay tuned with this because it started to, you know, be more and more usable to work with Kubernetes directly uh, from, uh, you know, the admin perspective by creating the cluster and just give it to your developers. On the Exolite front, uh, basically um, what we have with it this month is mostly uh, under the hood things. So not many things visible, but uh, take time to read because there's many uh, improvements and those improvements are making the whole thing more coherent. Uh, we are closer to the Figma design we had first and uh, we have many you know, quality of life things that are making it uh, uh, really useful and also on this front expect um, more visible improvements uh, this summer because we really, uh, you know, put the foundation on what's needed to, to move further. So that's uh, a, a great start. And uh, to finish on Zen Orchestra itself, but not on the whole topic, um, um, we got a, what we call a MISC section. So it's basically improvement on the existing Zen Orchestra web UI. Uh, now you could when you have an, uh, an ISO SR, when you want to add ISO to it, you are not, you know, previously you had to download the ISO from Debian or whatever project on your own computer and then to upload it through the web UI. Now you could just put the um, ISO URL directly inside the ISO downloader and it will fetch it for you. So that's even more convenient and faster when you want to add an ISO that is available somewhere publicly and it will be automatically downloaded in, right inside the uh, ISO SR. We also improved the UI to expose the raw VDI import exports. I mean, it was already working in the back end, but sadly it wasn't exposed in the front end. So it was rather easy to do, but that's better because sometimes you want to, you know, import or export in the raw formats. Uh, might might be easier, you know, if it's not VHD, you could just mount it directly uh, as a device uh, in your machine. So if you want to, I don't know, inspect a drive or whatever, uh, you could do that with the raw format. Um, I will just keep the uh, various dependencies improvement. It's mostly security related, but also an interesting thing, if you have a, a decently sized infrastructure, let's say uh, starting from 20 hosts or even bigger than this, uh, we made a really nice improvement in terms of performances uh, that was mostly related to how uh, you deal with the stats. And so far, if you spent a lot of time to, you know, blow stats of multiple hosts, multiple VMs, and so on, we had many issues with the cache and the fact that those stats were still, uh, you know, running query uh, behind, and then it, you know, accumulated and had many, many, uh, you know, uh, parsing to do for those stats. Uh, we made those changes, and it's a lot faster. So people running with uh, decent infrastructure will just feel that is everything is snap here. So it's a, it's a lot better. And let me uh, come back to the start of the blog posts, uh, which is uh, related to the uh, partner program. Um, this is something that we just uh, released uh, this week. Uh, in fact, uh, two days ago. Um, you might be interested if you want to resell, uh, you know, our new stack based on XCP engines and Orchestra, Exostore, and so Exolite, and so on and so on. Uh, we put a, a program helping you to do that uh, with many, you know, interesting benefits for you. So if you're interested to become a partner, uh, feel free to take a look on this blog post. And uh, that's it to me uh, for this month. So uh, I hope you enjoy all those new uh, features you have for the June release. And I think uh, you will have even more surprises for the next month. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, see you next month. Bye-bye.